Hi everyone, Chris here with an early look and hands-on of this, the new ZenBook A14 from ASUS. So it has just been announced at CES 2025, along with Qualcomm's new chipset, which is the Snapdragon X Elite and the Snapdragon X processors. These are the new revised ones from them that are now in the ZenBook A14. 14 inch laptop, it's very lightweight. This only weighs 980 grams and yet it's just 15.9 millimeters, the thickness of it, which is excellent. It has a backlit keyboard, 70 watt hour battery, which is gonna give us days of battery life because remember, this is an ARM chipset now running Windows 11, which is the ARM version of it, which is a lot more efficient in terms of energy consumption compared to say the Intel and AMD chipsets out there. This really is, I feel, the future now of PC computing with Windows if you don't need to do demanding tasks that is because it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. It is after all Adreno graphics that it's using. Good with the ZenBook A14, we get a pouch which is a very nice quality pouch. It does fit it perfectly. There's a power cable there and a 90 watt power supply which is very small and compact. Now this is a GAN charger so that's why they managed to get the size of it down nice and small and you can easily source a different power cable for this because you can see it's using what I call the Mickey Mouse style plug. The ZenBook A14 has their Sura aluminum finish to it and it's very good, resists pink fingerprints. Now this is the gray color, there's also a beige that they do have which looks excellent and it's an easy open hinge so you can open that right up and it's not going to lift up at all the base. So the weight of the laptop is just under a kilo. It's 980 grams, which is excellent. So it's super lightweight and the thickness of it very good too as well because it is just 1.59 centimeters. So it's thin, it's light and has a great finish to it. The ZenBook A14 does come with an excellent keyboard. I've been typing a lot on this and I find it to be great that I haven't had any issues with it at all. And I find that the 1.3 millimeters of travel we get with these keys is very good. Now the touchpad, this is a glass touchpad, nice and large. It supports the typical gestures you get with the Zeus. So from the left hand side here, I can easily just swipe up and down to control my volume. Right hand side there to dim down the screen brightness and then just turn that right up if I needed to do so. Now those gestures are working really well and I do find that the cursor movement is excellent. So the finer movements that you may need to do, something that's very fiddly, well, it's gonna have no problems tracking that. The cursor does not jump all over the place and I don't have to apply a heavy amount of pressure. I don't need to press really hard in order for it to work well. No, it's very sensitive. And I feel like Zeus, like there are other touch pads I've seen with the ZenBook series are excellent. They are really good. So good keyboard. Now, one thing about the keyboard too, the power button is next to the delete. Now, I've not triggered this myself at all. I find it to be very good. I have not had any problems with that. You see, we've got the ZenBook logo right there and overall good keyboard layout. We do have the half size keys that you can see. So that's normal, the arrow up and down. You get this with a lot of keyboards and it's only a 14 inch laptop. So kind of to be expected there. And we do have a backlit keyboard. Now, even though I'm in a very bright here, lit house and in the kitchen, there's plenty of natural light coming in. You can see it. Now that's the keyboard off. This is the first stage. Then we do have the second. And finally, the brightest setting there at the top, which you can clearly see, even though I've got so much light at the moment in this kitchen, it does light up quite good. And at nighttime, you can see this keyboard really well. So on the right hand side, we do have this type A port. Now this is USB 3.2, so great for just plugging in a mouse. And it's the only type A port that we do get with the ZenBook A14, but plenty of ports. On the left, we've got HDMI 2.1, two type C ports here that do support video out and data at high speeds, 40 gigabits per second, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support. And this right here is a status LED next to it. Along the back, there is this little strip here. Now this is to aid the wireless reception, the coverage. Now it is using Wi-Fi 7.2 that's built into it. And it's a Qualcomm chip because after all, this is a Qualcomm powered laptop. The ZenBook A14 is powered by an ARM chip. So this is Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite that it comes with up to that or a Snapdragon X processor. So we've got up to 65 watts TDP with this. The cooling 
is active. So this is the intake right here. The battery within, very large for this kind of, kind of size here being 14 inches, is 70 watt hours. And it will go for, well, days depending on what you're doing, if it is light work. In my testing, I've seen that it's very well, but I can't give you an exact number yet to this being a prototype. So this 14 inch panel we have is an OLED screen and it looks very good, it's stunning. 600 nits is the maximum brightness. Now depending on the model you get, it's either going to be this 1800p panel that I've got right now, so that's 2880 by 1800, or there's a 1200p panel on the more entry level model you can get of the A14. Now it is running at a refresh rate of 120 hertz, so it's looking very good, but I've currently got it there at 60, because it's on the battery, so I'll force it onto the 120, which you're able to do, and everything is very smooth and fluid with this particular display. Now, I cannot give you the exact results, again, being a prototype of the screen. I normally measure this, but I will just run through and cycle through some of my little display images that I do have here, and you'll see that this is an excellent panel. Colors look good. I'm in a very bright environment. The only downside is probably what you're seeing is a lot of reflections here from this. Now, if it is a glossy panel, I always say, hey, it should be touch, and this is not a touch screen, so there's no Gorilla Glass that's covering this at all. It's just the panel, but the colors, the contrast, absolutely amazing here that you do get out of an AMOLED, and it does have a Zeus Splendid, so you can tweak this display a lot. So excellent looking colors. And these are some of my test photos I've been taking. You can see they look great on the screen. And really, I'm not doing it justice here. It is a bit reflective in this current environment. Can you make it out, say, aside in direct light? Can you make out the screen? Yes, you can, but at the cost of having a lot of reflections. Right up the top, we've got a full HD webcam, and there's even an infrared camera too for Windows Hello Login. So there's no fingerprint scanner, fingerprint reader, but then we do get that secure, very quick method using Face ID with Windows Hello to log in. So that's a good option to have. So this is what you can expect in a brightly lit environment. I've got some natural light coming in through the windows. The microphones you're listening to are those inbuilt ones too. They're applying a little bit of noise cancellation, hopefully cutting down on the echo. There's quite a bit in this area that I'm in because there's no like sofa or couch or anything absorbing the sound to cut down on echo. But overall, I'm impressed with the quality we get from this full HD webcam with the ZenBook A14. Benchmarks, I'm not able to show those, unfortunately, because this is a pre-release version. It's an engineering sample, so it does make sense that they have asked me not to show any benchmarks until I get a final version. Now, I'm doing some heavy multitasking. I've got Premiere Pro in the background. I'm screen capturing at the moment. And what I want to do is just quickly go over what you can expect performance-wise, because I'm very surprised with this performance. It's an ARM chipset, frame 32 gigabytes of RAM, and those RAM speeds are very good. So we're looking at 8,400 mega transfers, just over, so very similar, very close to the Lunar Lake from Intel. And I find that this is performing a bit better, especially when on battery, you get basically the same performance on power or battery you don't get that with the X86 or X64 chipsets. Unfortunately, they will have their performance, but not here. So everything's quick and snappy, 120 Hertz refresh rate, and it's all running at 120 frames per second. Now video playback, if it's 4K, anything I throw at it, is all good. No problems with it, playback performance. And if I throw something just a bit silly at it, which is a quite a high bit rate, 150 megabits per second, 8K, yes, 8K footage, no, it's going to struggle. And that makes sense. The Adreno is, is not happy handling this kind of bit rate with 8K. You see it's dropping frames like crazy, and we're losing a huge amount of frames. It's like running at five frames per second or something, which isn't amazing. But what is amazing, now you're hearing the fan because I'm I'm pushing the system very hard, is this. That looked a little bit laggy when it loaded in, of course, but this is in fact a video, the video you're watching right now, that I edited on this laptop, and it's 8K, the file. So look at this, playback. Now it's playing that. 
really well considering this is 8K, these clips. And I don't have too many transitions, but there's a lot of clips in there and it's very smooth. I'm surprised. And even my Meteor Lake or Lunar Lake laptops tend to choke, completely choke when it comes to the 8K video editing that I may do with Adobe Premiere Pro 25. Now I can remove the power. Now it's on the battery. Check this out. It is basically the same. If you're seeing any drop frames or stutters, it's because I'm screen capturing and doing this at the same time. That's causing the stutter, but what I'm looking at, it's very smooth. I can skip ahead in the timeline. Look at how quick this is. So that, to me, that's incredible. I am all for ARM if this is the kind of performance we're getting on. Battery is exactly the same as AC. So that is very good. I'll just minimize that. So there's a couple other things I want to show you. I won't take too long because this part's a little bit boring here. The battery care. Yes, you can limit the charge to 80% to prolong the battery. So great for longevity. Fan profiles. It's loud when it's pushed really hard in the full speed mode, which I'm running. And that's on battery. So we get full speed on battery. You can put it to the standard mode, which would have a max then fan noise of about 25 decibels. Excellent. You have a lot of other settings in here. I won't go over all of them. So sound modes, basically graphic equalizer, volume boost I have on, OLED care, great for this OLED screen. So pixel refresh, a few other settings there, OLED free dimming. It's a bit of a tongue twister, that one. Splendid for the display. And we have a switchable adaptive adaptive refresh rate. So on the battery, it's at 60 hertz, and then you can run 120 on AC or just fixed. So you can force this all the time to be 120. So there's other options in there, but I won't go over all of that. Now, of course, we do have AI on board. We have the NPU part of this chipset. We have in total 45 tops. You've got Copilot and some AI features from ASUS as well with the built-in software, which I may go over in the full review. But overall, I am really impressed with the multitasking performance of this, running so many things all at once, and it doesn't really skip a beat. And that 8K video editing, wow. How about gaming? Can the Snapdragon X Elite chipset, the new one here, game with that Adreno graphics? Well, I'll give it a quick test now. So this performance is just fine for basic games like this from the Windows Store with Asphalt 8. I've noticed a few little frame dips here and there, nothing too drastic. It's all very playable. And remember, I'm just on the battery at the moment. And if I was plugged in, I could put it into that 45 watt power limit mode, which would probably aid the performance a little bit. But still, this is very good and it looks great. So these are just basic games here. But you can't play AAA titles, so you can't play the latest Call of Duty, for example, and expect to get 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. It's not that type of laptop. So this is a business, student, laptop, home use, that kind of thing. Anything really but gaming and super demanding 3D work. The downwards firing speakers, they're not too bad at all. They're Dolby audio speakers. They've got a nice amount of volume to them and I think a little bit of bass considering the size of it that is acceptable for a 14-inch laptop. So I'll give you a sample now of those downwards firing speakers, which by the way, you can see there's one here, one on the other side. And this is going to be at 90% volume just to give us an idea of what to expect. I do think they could be a bit louder. They are certainly lacking a little in that area. Now the battery life, why I can't give you exact figures here because that would be, well, benchmark results, right? I'm seeing days of battery life out of this if you're gonna be just doing light tasks. So running like Chrome or Edge, answering emails, maybe editing a few photos, something that's quite light. Now if you're doing a bit of video editing, and of course that battery life is gonna be quite a bit less. Now I'll give you more exact figures in my final review of the ZenBook A14 when I do get my hands on a final retail version. As I mentioned in this video a few times, this is an engineering sample, so I'm not allowed to run any benchmarks, unfortunately, and I do apologize for that because that is not my typical kind of look at a laptop. I really do like to give you some exact figures on performance, but they will be coming. So the camera's good, microphone built in, very good. Backlit keyboard with the 1.3 millimeters of travel is excellent to use. I love typing on this. 
and I can't really criticize the keyboard too much apart from yes the half size arrow keys and I have not accidentally hit the power button which is good. The touchpad is very smooth, it's responsive, it's accurate and the sensitivity is right on the spot there because they've just done an excellent job optimizing this I feel. Speakers so far in my testing, I feel like they could be a bit louder even though I put that loudness boost mode on, it still isn't quite as loud as I'd like it to be. Now the screen is probably the biggest downside to this model here. It can be easily fixed though because you could put an anti-glare screen protector on this. However, out of the box, it's very glary and you're gonna get a lot of reflections from it. Now the max brightness, even in this very brightly lit environment house that I am at the moment, I can still make it out and use it, but you have to contend with the glare and the reflections of a lot of things, which people will find maybe a bit annoying. But as I said, you put a matte screen protector on this, you can probably fix that, but you're going to then lose that contrast ratio that you do get with this OLED screen. 120 hertz is very smooth. Windows performance in general, or the apps I've been running are good. It is ARM, but we have native ARM apps on this that are running, and of course AI and up to 45 tops when it comes to the AI performance, which is excellent. Now, if there are other apps that you want to run, they will be emulated, and there's no problems with this. Windows 11, this ARM branch of it now that they have, they've had for some time, is very good at that emulation. And then there's really almost next to no performance hit, so you can run all your favorite applications. I've not run into, into any issues. You can even edit 4K video just fine, but the 8K video clip I tried to test on this, far too demanding for it, but I did expect that. It's a crazy resolution. It's not really a realistic test, but it was just me trying to push it to the absolute limit, which it did. Fan noise, very good. So we'll get up to about 25 decibels, that is it. And the fan is normally off, completely off, when you're not doing anything and just light tasks, you will not hear that fan at all. So it looks like an excellent laptop here from Asus. The ZenBook A14, I will reserve, of course, my final opinion with that proper review where I can really test out the performance, run some benchmarks, and that will be up and coming in the channel in a few weeks. Thank you so much for watching this hands-on and first impressions here of our ZenBook A14.